In today's video, I'm going to talk about one of the most important innovations we've seen for investors since arguably May Day, which was May 1st, 1975, which is when trading commissions were deregulated by the SEC in the US, which essentially led to the creation of discount brokerages. The innovation I'm talking about is the Asset Allocation ETF. This video is sponsored by BMO ETFs, and so I'm going to use their suite of asset allocation ETFs as specific examples. But ETFs are available directly to investors today through discount brokerages, as well as through some advisors. Okay, so why do I think asset allocation ETFs are worth a look? Let's focus on some of the main benefits. Number one, it's in the name, asset allocation. Two, costs three, low maintenance, and four, they can be a one-stop solution for a portfolio that'll just make your investing life pretty simple. Okay, let's take a light look at asset allocation as this is really quite an important concept for investors. Let's look at eight different actual asset classes. In this case, we'll use Canadian equities, U.S. equities, international developed markets equities, usually referred to as the EFI. Emerging markets equities, just European equities, Canadian bonds, global bonds, and cash. Now, different asset classes tend to move in their own cycles. And let's chart the return rankings by year from 2009 to 2020 inclusive for these eight asset classes to show you that dynamic. Okay, now let's do something different. Let's assume that we have a return chaser someone who every year buys last year's best performing asset class. And let's see how $100,000 invested grew over 10 years using this strategy. So again, at the beginning of every year, they switch their portfolio 100% to last year's best performer like clockwork. Now, when we do that, we see that an initial $100,000 grew to $255,908. The annual return was 9.85%, but the volatility, as measured by the standard deviation of annual returns, was 12.72. Next, let's say that we have someone who is a contrarian, and they buy last year's worst performing asset class, like clockwork, at the beginning of every year. In this case, after 10 years, they end up with $210,616. That's an annual return of 7.73% and a standard deviation of 8.71. Interesting. But now let's look at a very simple balanced portfolio that's 60% equity and 40% fixed income. In fact, it is weighted 20% to Canadian equities, 40% to the MSCI World Equity Index, and 40% in Canadian bonds. Every year, it is rebalanced back to these target weights like clockwork. In this case, we see our ending value is $225,916. That's an annual return of 8.49%, but a standard deviation of 6.65, and lower is better. Let's take our three portfolios and plot their return versus risk on a graph. The return chasing portfolio is here, the contrarian portfolio is here, and the balanced portfolio just has way less risk and the return is pretty solid. On a risk adjusted ratio, this is very compelling. But just for kicks, let's go back for 15 years of history so we capture the great financial crisis, shall we? If we look at the growth of $100,000 starting from January 2004, the return chasing portfolio looked pretty, pretty compelling right before the great financial crisis. Does that remind you of anything where pretty much buying anything hot was making lots of money for years? You know, right when anyone and everyone feels like a genius or at the very least feels very, very confident is when capital markets tends to teach us some timeless lessons. Now, I don't know when the next to tuition payment is coming, but in this case, it was pretty devastating. A lot of people bailed on their investment strategies because they realized they were in very aggressive portfolios without any type of investment plan at all. But if we keep building out this chart, you'll see that the balanced portfolio was a much smoother ride. 
a ride that way more people could stick to. In any case, that's the power of diversification, asset allocation, and rebalancing all in just a few charts. And all of this is automated with an asset allocation ETF. So as an example, ZBAL, which is the BMO balanced ETF, would be close to this overall asset mix at 60% equities and 40% fixed income. And if you wanted an ESG version of a balanced asset allocation ETF, there is ZESG. Now you can dial up the risk and potential long-term return with ZGrow, or you could swing more conservatively to ZCon. Your individual ability to stomach risk, your financial capacity to handle risk, your need to handle risk, along with your time horizon and goals for your portfolio, these are all important parts of building an appropriate portfolio, but having a turnkey solution certainly makes the execution of whatever that ends up being a lot easier. Some people could easily have just one asset allocation ETF as their entire portfolio. Others may want to anchor their portfolio to an asset allocation ETF. And I think there's a lot of people who fall into that category, especially if, like many investors, you start out by just buying a handful of stocks and you have kind of a lopsided portfolio. Maybe it's tech heavy or maybe it's just one stock like Tesla. I know a lot of people are like that. And you kind of know that it's not really a well-built diversified portfolio. You could add an asset allocation ETF and build out a much more prudent portfolio. So the point is there's a lot of use cases. And another one of my favorite aspects of these asset allocations beyond all that are the low costs. MERs of 20 beeps, 0.2% is pretty attractive. Now, I did some number crunching using a hypothetical scenario of someone who is a diligent saver putting away 10% of their income, starting by earning $45,000 per year at age 25, retiring at 65, spending their portfolio down to zero at age 90. They write their last check, it bounces, they die. It's kind of a weird spreadsheet, yeah. I modeled in inflation, income raises, uh, a declining risk appetite, and I might put together a separate video to really dive into those variables and share that spreadsheet with you. But suffice it to say, if your entire portfolio cost was 0.2% versus, let's say, 1.5%, you could either, in this case, increase your annual portfolio withdrawals by 50% per year for the duration of your retirement, or you could just retire five years earlier with the same level of portfolio withdrawals in this particular case study that I created as a hypothetical. And it's not an outlandish scenario at all. In fact, okay, I will put that video together. Now, these seemingly small differences in costs compound over time. And over very long periods of time, it is a very big deal. Now, there may be some concepts or terminology that I've used in this video that may be new to you or you might be fuzzy on, but I'll point out that I cover asset allocation ETFs management expense ratios, rebalancing, and other important investing concepts in my Learn About Investing free online course in partnership with BMO Investor Line, where incidentally, you can purchase these asset allocation ETFs without paying any trading commissions at all if you're a DIY investor, so even more compelling. I'll include some links in the description for where you can find out more about BMO ETFs, asset allocation ETFs, and other ETFs, and I'll include a link to the free investing course. It's so free, you don't even have to register to watch the lessons. If you like this video, I hope you hit the like button, also free. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications for new content. And I will see you in the next video.